Hello. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hi, I'm glad that you are able to join me for this 30 minutes. When I get on the camera, I really do not know what the Lord would help me to say. But I know that whatever it is, it's going to edify you and just, just really build you up just to encourage you to make it to the next step. Let's see what our word says for today. This is, I have the Version app on my phone. And it gives me a new Bible verse every day. This is John 14th chapter, the 27th verse. This is the King James Version. Peace I leave with you. My peace. I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Again, this is John 14th chapter, 27th verse, King James Version. Peace I leave with you. My peace. I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You know, we come in to some trying times and that spirit of fear does try to overtake us. But we don't have to let it. We can cast it down. It says that he left us with peace. Jesus left us with peace. He's the Prince of Peace. The Prince of Peace dwells on the inside of us. And this is Jesus talking because it's in red. He said he left peace with us he said that he said his peace you know Jesus wasn't afraid he was not afraid people came at him he could walk right through the crowd and they can touch him he wasn't afraid you never saw in the Bible where Jesus ran from anyone he never ran from anyone Never ran from anyone. Demons ran from him. The demons ran from him. He never ran. Never ran. He said that he gave us his peace. You know, the word of God tells us that God gives us peace that's beyond our understanding. We can't, we don't, we're not going to understand everything. We're not going to understand everything. And it's only a measure that we're going to be able to understand. God will give us some revelation. And then another time we may read just that same scripture and get a little more revelation. He said, not as the world giveth. You know, we could go through something like maybe the death of a, of a, ch of a child, a spouse, or a, of a loved one. And the world does try to comfort us. The world tries to bring us that comfort, that peace. You know, it's a friend or someone, you know, send their condolences. Um... And try to, you know, be there for us, you know, making sure that we are okay. But it can't compare 
to the peace that Jesus has. It cannot compare. It cannot. They could try all their might to help us to get through it. Being their phone calls, um, going places with us, but nothing can compare to what Jesus can do. He said, let not your heart be troubled. You know, our heart, my, our heart is troubled about a lot of things. You know, I hear people say that their children um, will leave the house and they don't know where, where they're at. You know, spend days away from the house or... Um, they're afraid of their child. Just different things. And um, God can give you peace even in that. And he will let you know that your child is okay. That he has your child. So we don't even have to be afraid in that. We don't have to be afraid. Wondering where they, where are they? You know, we don't have to be afraid in that. We give it to the Lord. We give it to Him and let Him handle it. Because we wasn't made to handle things like that. Fear is turmoil. Our bodies, our body wasn't meant to handle turmoil like that. God created our body where we can take on some things, but we're supposed to cast those things off from him. So us holding on to all of that fear, all of that turmoil, that would drive us crazy. It would drive us crazy. We can't, we can't do it. We can't do it. I remember even as a child growing up and hearing different stories about um, how a child broke their, their parent's heart. And now the parent mind is gone. It's like it's like something happens in the that parent mind is just is just gone because of so much heartache, so much turmoil happening. And another thing that the enemy does is he will have you to think of things. You know, he, he tries to escalate things. He, he, like, he makes it much bigger than what it is. He have you just in so much turmoil thinking that this could happen. Not that it happened, but it could happen. That's how the enemy operates. Fear of the unknown. So we would have that fear of the unknown. But when those things come up, our job is to cast it down. Is to cast it down. Worry, anxiety, we're supposed to cast that down. Whatever concerns us concerns the Lord. He can carry our burdens better than we can. See, we think that 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 you know, if we worry about it, that everything would be okay, that we can fix it. We can't. We can't fix it. We can't fix it. We can't make it okay. But God can. He can. He can make it okay. Because this says, let not your heart be troubled. We are not supposed to be led by our heart. We're not. You know, when you're afraid, your heart beats so fast, so fast. Your heart beats so fast. I can remember... Just, just sitting down, just doing nothing, and uh, anxiety 
and back anxiety would just take over my heart would just start being beating fans out of out of nowhere out of nowhere and as I got into the word I realized that it was the enemy so I started casting it down it would start and I would cast it down see the more that you do that the enemy gonna flee he's gonna flee He's not going to flee as you um doing it one time. It takes more than that. Because the enemy is persistent. He's persistent. And even when you get him to flee, he's going to come at a more opportune time. He did it with Jesus. He did it with him. So why wouldn't he do it with us? He's going to do us the same way. So our heart, you know, just, we have to put a guard over our heart. The word of God tells us to place a guard over our heart. We can't just allow anything to get into our heart. You know, you see these different commercials that talk about, um, how the people are starving, and mostly they they show children. They pull at your heartstring. They try to try to get you to have compassion for that child, for that country. So we shouldn't be guided by our heart. We shouldn't. He tells us not to let our heart be troubled. You know, people, people, you know, they have heart attacks because of, of things that their children um, are doing and they couldn't, they couldn't um, control them or, you know, they, they didn't know how to handle that situation and they would really end up being sick. Spouse cheating on them, and they're just so heartbroken, they end up really damaging their heart. Our body just wasn't meant for that. We have to trust God enough to give those things to Him and not hold them. We can't hold those things, we can't hold them. It's going to mess up your body when you do that. So it, it cannot be done. It cannot be done. I know that you've heard that people have died of a broken heart. And I really believe that that's true. I really believe that that's true. Because our heart, we we just can't. We can't hold all of those things. We can't do it. We can't. All of that stress. You know, it's just so much that our body can take. God really made our body strong. He made our body just tough. He really did. He really did because he knew that we were human. And that we were going to endure a lot. So that's why the enemy is just so persistent. And he takes his time and just just really hammers away at us. He takes his time and, and do this. So we have to cast it down. We know it's not God giving it to us. If we know it's the enemy, we cast it down. If it's God, we embrace it. God isn't going to make you worry about your child, your finances, your health, your job, your spouse, yourself. God isn't going to make you worry about that. He'll give you solutions to it. He'll give you solutions. Have you ever been on a job and they'll, they'll say, don't bring me a problem, bring me a solution? He'll give us a solution. He doesn't give us problems. 
So we have to have our spiritual ears open to hear the solution. And he said, not to let your heart be troubled and neither let it be afraid. As I said earlier, fear is torment. Torment. You know, I think about that movie Gaslight, very old movie. Very old. He would do things to make his wife think that she was going crazy. She would, um, she would see the, they had gas in the, that's how they had light. So he would work doing different things and she would see that the the light would go dim because he was working just, just doing different stuff. And he would make it seem like she was just losing her mind. And he would just do different things. Just things on top of things. Um have her ask her what something was and she's like you didn't give it to me he's he's like I gave it to you I mean just to make her go crazy to make her go crazy sad to say that people do people like that for real for real people do people like that to make them think that they don't know what they're what they're doing to make them think that um, that they're wrong. But when you know who you are in Christ, can't nobody take that away from you. Can't nobody make you lose your mind. They can't. I've heard it time and time again where a woman is dating someone or maybe even her husband and he would say one thing and then when she asks him about it it's like I didn't tell you that I didn't tell you that you know or um, he's out all night oh I was trying to get the car fixed and making her think that you know how are you getting the car fixed at night and then um he would say that he's getting something fixed. Let's say the um, something was wrong with the battery or whatever. He would end up using that, that same line again. And she's like, well, I thought that you said that you got the battery done last time. Oh, uh-uh, you got that wrong. It was um, something else. And then because he plays that role, all the time making her think that she's losing her mind. Making her think that that she doesn't um that she'll forget things, that she's forgetful, that she she'll forget things. We have to be so careful. God has given us everything that we need to win a battle. Because the enemy is going to try to take us out. Because if he can get you not to open your mouth and tell others about him, about um, Jesus, that's what he wants to do. That's where he wants you at. If he can get you so afraid that you're going to tell somebody the wrong thing, that's where he wants you. And you need to refuse to let the enemy win in your life. You need to refuse to do that. You know it's the enemy. Don't fall for it. Do not fall for it. Because that's where he wants you. He wants you timid. He wants you all afraid and um, shy. Just, just laid back. Not wanting to do anything. That's where he wants you. But the word of God tells us not to let our heart be troubled. So we don't have to be like that. And we think that, oh, that's part of my personality. No. No. 
we have to really take an inventory of our life to look back because the enemy slowly, I mean, he is very slow. He's very slow. He can take years to do something. He's very slow. He's, he's patient. He's not like us. You know, we want things quickly. The enemy is patient. He's patient. We just go really slow. Send those thoughts to you. Well, you know, um, cancer just seemed to just be in my family. And he just keeps sending those thoughts. And just keeps sending those thoughts. Until the next thing you know, you go to the doctor and they tell you that you have cancer. Because that's what he does. Very sneaky. The enemy is very sneaky. We have to be on our game. We can't. We can't just let the enemy just shoot all these thoughts to us. God tells us not to let our heart be troubled. He says it in his word. We just read it. So if he's telling us not to let our heart be troubled, that means that we can do this. We can do this. God doesn't tell us to do things that he know we can't do. If he's saying don't let your heart be troubled, that means that we can not let our heart be troubled. That we have the ability. He has given us the ability to do that. Our trust has to be in him. It has to be in him. Has to be. So whatever he says in his word, he meant it. He meant what he said in his word. And we can do what he said in his word. We can do it. If he said we can do it, then we can do it. That's why we have the Holy Spirit to help us. To help us. That's our strength. That's our strength. He's all powerful. Can't nothing match the power of our God. Nothing can match that. And we need to know that. We need to know that people, people, um, there are so many um, people that, that used to worship Satan until they found out that he's not as powerful as he makes himself seem. He's not. He's not. The word of God says that he comes as a roaring lion. He's not a lion. He's not. I've heard people say that like Satan is a lion. No, he's not. He come as a roaring, as a roaring lion. He's not nothing. He's not nothing compared to God. And the greater one dwells inside of us. So we can we can win the battle against Satan. We can win it. So our, our um, heart doesn't have to be troubled. We don't have to be afraid at night. We don't have to be afraid. We can cast that fear down. Remember, fear is torment. It's torment, so you don't have to be afraid. We can cast that fear down. We don't have to put up with that. The enemy is no match for God. And God lives on the inside of us. So he's no match for us. That's why we don't operate out of the flesh. But we operate out of the spirit. We have to know. How God created us and what he has done for us. We have to know this ourselves. That's why we have to get into the, into the word for ourselves. 
if we are living in fear, then we need to be looking up scriptures about faith, about peace. We need to be looking up these scriptures so that we can speak to ourselves. The word of God even tells us to speak to ourselves. Encourage yourself in the Lord. We speak other things to ourselves. Like telling, telling I was like, that was so stupid. I don't know why I'm doing I'm so stupid to think something like that. We don't tell ourselves stuff like that. That is not something that you say to yourself. We have to be so careful at the things that we say to ourselves. We don't have to accept the lies of the enemy. We don't have to accept his lies. So place a guard over your heart. And don't let your heart be afraid. Don't let it be afraid anymore. When that fear starts rising up, your heart starts beating fast, cast it down. You don't have to accept it. Cast it down. Don't let your heart be afraid. Don't be worried. Don't be anxious for nothing. For nothing. The greater one dwells in you. So God has this. God has it. He has it. Don't take it from him. Let him have it. Have you ever been seeing children play and one has something and the other one takes it away? Let God have it. Give it to him. Give it to him. He wants it. He wants it because he he can get rid of it. He knows how to handle it. Give it over to him. So that you can have peace. The Prince of Peace lives on the inside of you. Why not utilize what tools you have? So what's in your heart? It, it's the end of our 30-minute session. And I always pray because I never know who's watching that don't have Jesus in their heart. Now is the time. Don't put it off. Just repeat after me. Jesus, come into my heart. I know that I'm a sinner and I need a Savior. I ask you to be my Lord and my Savior. I ask you to forgive me for my sins. I know that you came, you died, you was resurrected just for me. Because you love me so much, you endured the cross. All the beating and the shame, you endured that because of your love for me. Now I can live eternally with you and the Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Now that you pray that prayer, you are saved. You are saved. Yes, I am very proud of you. You've made the best decision that you could ever make. The most important decision that you will ever make in your life. Now you can communicate with the Father. He can communicate with you. You're going to enjoy your walk with the Lord. Tell someone that you are a Christian. There's no such thing as a closet Christian. Tell someone. Open up and tell them. And also pray with someone to become to become saved like you. They, so they can be on the, their way to heaven like you are. You make it a good day. I pray for you and your family very much throughout the day. So you make it a good day. I love you much. And I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.